Welcome to Varanda IAS. In the session Indian Economy, now we will be discussing about the weakness and reforms in budgeting. If you see in the earlier session, we have discussed what is government budgeting and what are the components of budgeting and we have discussed about the type and the procedure involved. Now, based on those procedures, now we will be discussing about the weaknesses and the advantages in the budgeting process. Okay, It is very very essential to know about the disadvantages in the budget so that while we are formulating the budget, we can ensure that it is having more accuracy and it gives a very good policy direction to all the actions that is implemented in the nation which eventually leads to the economic growth. Okay, Because the planning and the budget is very very essential, isn't it? Because that lays the roadmap for the like you know the growth ahead. So, it is very very important to ensure that the budget is the right form. So, in this session we will be discussing about the what are the weaknesses is there in the budgeting. Okay, So, let us uh, we discuss about the weakness and further we will uh, discuss about few reforms that we need to do to overcome thus weaknesses. Okay, First is budget weakness or disadvantages. So, what are the weakness that we have? First one is inaccuracy. What kind of inaccuracy that we have while formulating the budget? The first most important inaccuracy that we have is data. Because for an example, now if I need to plan for going for a trip to Manali, then how I would be planning? I would be planning based on the facts that how much it would cost, what is the cost of the place over there and what is the situation in Manali, what is the status of COVID in Manali. So, I will be planning for all these aspects, then only I will be deciding whether I will be going for the trip or not, isn't it? So, but in this case, that is government budgeting, we need data from all government departments. And all government departments, they collect data from the groundwork, that is the groundwork implementation agency. So, as a lot of data and facts are accumulated, what happens? It mostly leads to inaccuracy. Okay? None of them is giving the correct data and it is very difficult to monitor such amount of humongous work that the all departments are doing. So, what happens eventually? The inaccuracy data leads to inaccuracy of planning which results in inaccurate budget as well. So, one of the important problem that we are facing is inaccuracy. Next is rigid decision making. So, what happens? In case if you see when we are planning for a going for a budget, that is take the same example that I am going to Manali. On the way now if I am getting an uh, information that like you know in Manali the situation is not good, the COVID case is very high and you cannot go for the trip. Okay. So, what would I do? On the way I may change my plan to some other place, isn't it? In a similar way, the decision making, that is while they are planning the budget, okay, if they are planned and they are about to implement the budget and the implementation process has begun just now and it is going on, that time whatever challenges that we are facing, the budget would be in a such a position that it is able to adopt to such kind of changes, okay. For instance, the government is trying to implement a scheme for the vaccination program, okay. Now, in a particular area and a particular state, the vaccination driven drive is not going well because of various factors. For instance, people are not trusting in the vaccination program or people are not ready to go for spend on the vaccination and the state government is facing a lot of issue as they are not having cold storage uh, structure or any transportation because for vaccination, transport and storage is very essential, right? So, the, as the state does not have such kind of measures, what might happen? It will have a lot of changes in the particular state. So, here the planning that needs to be very much ahead. So, what kind of change of course can be done? Isn't it? What can be done? We can have the help from the neighboring state because from the neighboring state it can be transported every day. Okay. So, that the vaccination drive can happen in a healthier way. Isn't it? Such kind of planning needs to be done. But in case of budget, what is happening? The change in the budget is not possible. Once a budget document is given in the beginning of the year, what happened? The same kind of plan is going to be implemented all through the year. So, the changing that which cannot be done in between is again a great drawback or weakness in the Indian budget. Okay. So, the budgeting method focus on management teams attention on the strategy solely during the budget formulation phase near the physical year's end. Okay. So, what is when we are starting the decision making only at the year's end. Okay. And moreover, we are not giving adequate time for the planning as well. Okay. So, all these things leads to inefficiency or to the weakness of the budgeting process. Next is time required. As I said, the budget, we are not doing uh, like in a budget for individual person. Even for an individual, it takes around a day, isn't it? But in case if you take here, we are going to do for the entire Indian population. And moreover, we have lot of resources, lot of deficiencies, higher amount of population increasing, isn't it? So, how many problems we are having to overcome that? What we want? We wanted to have a like, you know, a required amount of time need to be given to the budgeting process. For instance, here in case of India, if you take 
the budget process okay that starts before three to four months before the presenting of the budget so in this case it's very very inefficient and all the ministries need to push their budget uh, like uh, their presentation before even the end of the financial year what they have planned ahead so this kind of cycle that makes inefficient planning and this leads to weakness and this not giving accurate outcome in the budgeting process okay next is blame for outcomes generally what we do like you know there are two things one is outcome another one is output okay so what we do is whenever there is a no outcome okay that is when we are not getting the required output okay first let me tell you the difference between output and outcome so that we will have clarity here see for an example i am uh, going to uh, constructing a dam okay and while i am constructing dam my objective is to ensure that all the people in that area are getting irrigation facilities that is my primary objective so based on that i am implementing a scheme for the construction of the project in that particular area okay now output of the scheme is that i have constructed the dam over there as the output outcome means that the required benefit has reached the beneficiaries that is all the people in that area has got the irrigation facilities that is the outcome okay so this is outcome and that is output generally what happens is people in the budget they focus on the output rather than giving importance to outcomes okay so what they do they give importance to the output rather than giving importance to outcome this is also again one of the important weaknesses that the indian budget is having okay next if you see in case in the blame for outcomes what happens is if the one department okay they are not meeting their outcome okay what they do they generally blame on the other departments because for a simple scheme to be implemented let's take beti pacho beti padao what happens in that scheme that scheme is implemented by different ministries isn't it ministry of women and child welfare their ministry of uh, like you know health and ministry of uh, like you know lot of ministries are involved in that scheme implementation so even if one ministry's coordination is missing in that the entire scheme has been blamed that the all the other ministries are not cooperating well that's why the scheme is not implemented well okay so it's very very easy for them to blame on the other ministries rather than ensuring that the work is getting done okay so it's a blame for outcomes is happening in the budgeting process and again this gives an inaccurate input for the next financial year as well next is expense allocation so if you see that the budget may mandate that specific amounts of overhead cost be allocated to particular department and the ministers of those departments may object to distribution techniques employed for an example before the beginning of the budget okay what happens in the earlier case vote on account was happening why they go for vote on account because before the budget starts and the all the financial aspects get approved it takes lot of time okay so even the next financial it's a year itself begins during that time so we went for vote on account in the vote on account we will be giving them 1 by 6th of the money of the entire budget in advance isn't it this is what you would have studied in polity so right now if you see based on this vote on account allocation or any of the amount that we need to allocate in the prior dates within that 1 by 6 there is lot of clashes between different departments different department is trying to blame on the share that is given to them during this initial period okay they are saying that the pre amount that is the amount that has been allocated for us during this preliminary period is not sufficient that's why our entire outcome is very very like you know it's not efficient and the outcome is very very weak the people are trying to blame it on this preliminary allocation of the budgetary expenditure to that particular department next is it only considers financial outcomes as i said budget generally we try to talk with the numerical numbers isn't it we are not trying to include the outcomes as such as you can consider the example of dam that i have said you earlier we are not focusing on the outcomes but we are trying to focus only on the financial outcomes which is not the very good indicator for the development okay either it will show only the growth but it will not be showing us the development okay so that's one of the important weaknesses next is some other disadvantages what are the some other disadvantages that we have that is budget preparers are unfamiliar with the operations okay so whoever is preparing the budget all the people are not you know very much familiar with the operation because every year many people get retired many people are recruited so this inefficiency of the budget preparers that also leads to the like you know in uh, weakness of the budget okay then budget preparers are not up to date this is very very significant issue that we are facing see for an example if they are implementing a project regarding the uh, women empowerment or the like you know protection of the women in the during the general period of time either it can be the workplace or it can be domestic place so now what happens whenever the government is implementing the scheme 
they are implementing it in the budget, isn't it? They need to allocate fund for the scheme in the budget without knowing whether the scheme is like either whether it is necessary or it is futile or it can be prolonged over the next period of time. What happens is the budget becomes very, very weak because we don't have an update. What is the outcome of the scheme? Is the scheme is performing well or not? As the scheme is existing in the previous year, without any accurate data, we are just continuing the scheme in the next year also. This all these things leads to wastage of money and it's not giving a required output to the uh, like you know government. Okay. So again, this all these things go very much futile. Next is each year the budget is constructed in a unique manner. Every year, if you see whenever the budget is prepared, one or new initiatives they are coming up. Okay. So when the budget preparation process is not so much consistent, what happens? Again, it leads to inefficiency and the budget preparers also become so much unfamiliar with the operations. For an example, you can consider GST. Okay. Because we have introduced a new measures GST. So now the budget preparers may not have a clear idea how much the GST is going to contribute. Okay. Before two years, we went for demonetization. Again, we may not know what is it will be the impact of demonetization, how the economy is going to perform. So, when the upcoming year, when we are like you know, formulating budget, we will be facing a lot of issues, isn't it? Because based on the uh, income and expenditure only, we are calculating the budget. In case if you are not sure about our income, either it can be from the tax side or because of the demonetization or its impact on the economy, how come we will be able to calculate the income and expenditure in accurate way, isn't it? So, again, this creates a chaos in the formulation of the budget, okay? Next is, there is a dearth of raw data entering the budgeting process. That is what, like you know, the budget is started before 3 to 4 months of the, like, publishing of the budget, isn't it? So, what happens during this time is, some, when the budget is going on, that is preparation process is going on, some amount of raw data, it also enters the uh, budgeting processes, which has not been processed, okay? That means the data not been validated, or it has not been approved by the particular governments. The data keep on coming in. So, this again makes the budgetary process very, very complex. Then, there is a lack of communication between these res those responsible for budgeting and those responsible for operation, okay. So, there is a lack of communication between the those responsible for budgeting and those responsible for operation. As I said, they are not having any kind of link between the implementation uh, team and the planning team, okay. So, this creates a lot of hindrances and it is not giving the real picture then how the budget needs to be formulated, okay. So, generally it is said that the people who are going for budgeting are arm, uh, armchair scholars. Armchair means the people who are sitting and they have no idea about what is happening in the outside world. That is, their budget is not connected with the reality process as well. Next is budget weakness and disadvantages. Let us see some other general issues that we are facing. The budget is developed without input from people, okay. So, how the budget should be formulated? That is, the budget should be formulated with all the stakeholders, isn't it? Nowadays, if you take, the government is calling the stakeholders of private players, important private players and all is considered from each sector. But again, the participation of common public, which is very highly missing in the budgetary process. And again, this makes the budgetary process, that is the outcome, very much inefficient, okay. Next is, the managers have no idea how their budget allowances are allocated or breakdown of their cost. Sometimes, whoever is formulating the budget, they are not uh, clear how the budget has been allocated, how it has been break down and all these things, okay. Next is budget documents are frequently too lengthy. This is very well known. Even only preparing for civil services, you would have noticed this, that budget documents are very, very lengthy. So, it is very highly difficult for a common man to understand what they have given in the budget, okay. Only whatever highlights that has been coming up in the media, only through that people will be getting, you know, what is being given in the budget. Because only like, you know, the uh, students or the like policy planners or the people who are involved in public administration, only these people get to know the entire budget, isn't it? So, all the common people may not be going through the entire budget document and moreover some kind of unnecessary information is also given like quotes and all these things. So, these are waste of, uh, you know, pages and space, isn't it? So, this all these things leads to lengthy document and people find it very difficult to understand from this. Next is, this again, you know, because of this lengthy document, it uh, distances the like, you know, between the public and the policy planners. Again, this not creating adequate outcome for us, okay. Next is, managers disregard their budgets due to their appearance as unworkable and unrealistic. So, again, this is also happening. What happens is, when the budget is coming to the particular department, they will be implementing it for a particular time. And over a period of time, in case if they realize this, this budget is not going to work for them. There is no option for them to change, okay. Even knowing the reality that it is not going to work, they cannot do anything with the budget. 
isn't it? The plan will be executed as such. So, only in the next financial year, they will be getting an opportunity to bring changes within that. Again, this is one of the weakness of the budget. Okay. So, now we have discussed about the weakness of the budget. That is from data. For budget, what and all information we need? So, budget we want data. So, this data is it processed or raw information. And again, is it accurate? Okay. Is it accurate or is it raw? We have all these issues with related to the data itself. Then what happens in related to the ministers? So what happens? The project becomes very rigid and these people are highly involved. They focus only on the output, not on the outcome and they keep blaming with the other ministries. So these are the various issues that we are having with the budget and moreover it is highly rigid. It is not as much flexible. So only after near we can again change the budgetary procedure or budgetary document. And moreover, we are having rapid changes that is like GST, demontization, all these things are not giving clear clarity like how the much the income will be getting by the government, okay, that is the government will be getting. So, this again leads to some kind of unpredictability in the budgetary processes, okay. So, these are the challenges that we have in the budgeting process. Now, we will discuss how to overcome these challenges that is reforms in Indian budgeting, okay. If you take the reforms initiative established a foundation for the pursuing additional revisions to maximize the benefits of the reforms, okay. The next is to accomplish the intended goals, okay. Innovation should be followed by the enhancements to supporting systems and procedures, okay. So, what we need to do? For instance, this, we already know that we are having issue like data, okay. What issue we have? That is inaccuracy of the data, collection from various sources and processing of this data again becoming a very huge issue for us. So, what we are saying? To accomplish the intended goals, that is, to achieve the budgetary like our targets, what we need to do, we go for innovations. What kind of innovations that we can bring up in data? We can bring up innovations like big data analysis, okay. So, artificial uh, intelligence kind of collecting data, all these measures can be taken, eventually it will lead us to a right target and right amount of planning as well, okay. This will simplify the process and moreover, every step we are taking, we can analyze what amount of success we have reached in the planning and if the planning is going the right direction or not also can be easily monitored, okay. So, this is the advantage of the like having innovations in the budgetary process. Again, this is one of the reforms that has been suggested to overcome the drawbacks that we are having, okay. Next is reform initiatives in the budgetary system in India are as follows, okay. What are those? One is budgeting should be performance driven. What is performance driven? For an example, in case if we are trying to start a new uh, scheme, okay, what basis we will start this new scheme? That is based on the performance of the earlier scheme that is related in the same field. For an example, you can consider about investment in the startups, okay, or the MSME sector, we will take it in particular. In case if you are establishing a scheme for the MSME schemes, okay, we need to invest how much is based on the earlier year's performance, okay. So, it should be based on the performance driven rather than the demand driven, okay. Even though the demand might be very high, okay, but we need to understand how it is performing. So, up to what phases the funds should be released or what phase of growth it should be happening, all these should be determined based on the performance of the particular sector in the previous years, okay. Next is expenditure planning should be included multi-year perspective, okay. That is expenditure planning, whatever we are doing expenditure, it should be included multi-year perspective. That is, for an example, if you are having a project that is going to happen over a 10 year period of time. For an example, you can consider the projects like golden quadrilateral, okay. In this what we are doing, the golden quadrilateral project, we are trying to connect various cities through road transport. So, now in this case what happens is it is going to be a multi-year project. So, our expenditure planning for that particular project should be in a multi-year way even though the fund is going to be allocated in a yearly wise manner, okay. So, that kind of multi-year perspective expenditure planning we should go for and it should be very much implemented according to the process, that is the performance of the project, okay. In case of the previous year, if the uh, golden quarterly project has performed well, then you can uh, invest a lot of money in the next year also. In case of the previous itself is it is not performing well, then you need to allocate it based on the like you know inputs like in the next year how it is going to be resolved is it possible to resolve it or not or is the process is getting stalled or not once you have all this information you can ensure that next year how much of money you can invest because after investing if the project is getting stalled the money is not used in any sector and moreover it is not earning any benefit for anyone in the economy so the money is just getting locked in that particular uh, project okay 
such kind of things need to be avoided. The next one is a rule based budget management system should be established. That is, even though we are speaking about flexibility, okay, we are already saying that the budget is a rigid process, but the framework can be rigid, but within the framework, there should be given flexibility. They are saying the framework, there is a framework of the budget should be rule based, okay. So, rule based budget management system should be established. For instance, if the data need to be given by the department in every three years, three months once, it need to give the data, okay. That is, a rule based budget management system should be established, okay. Now, see this in detail. As I said, budget should be performance driven. That is, the budgeting system performance orientation demands development of credible performance data. So, how can we analyze the performance? We can analyze the performance based on the credible performance data and the integration into budget decision and enhancement of the performance management system. Okay. As I said, you can consider the example of golden quadrilateral. Based on the performance, again, you can go for budgeting. Then again, here, the planning should include a multi year perspective. The similar example, you can take it here. Okay. The last one is rule based budget management system should be established as I said the framework need to be rigid but inside the framework there should be little bit of flexibility needs to be given ok. So, increase the effectiveness of the rule based budget management system the desirable aspect of next generation fiscal rule should be applied. For instance you can take this example of fiscal consolidation ok. So, why we go for fiscal consolidation? Why we are trying to reduce the fiscal deficit? In earlier times, if you see, if a government comes to power, okay, at the that too during the end of the period, if they are knowing that next term is a very much doubtful for them, the government will be spending lot of money, okay. They will be creating lot of fiscal deficit and they will leave the government in such a way for the next uh, team to take it, okay, that is next ministry to acquire it. In such a situation, what happens? The entire economic situation becomes very, very worse. So, to, in order to uh, avoid such kind of problems, we came up with this concept of fiscal consolidation. That is, every year, we cannot get more amount of fiscal deficit from the market or from the RBI for a particular percentage. Every year, there should be some kind of limitation on the deficit that can be got by the government, okay. This process is called as fiscal consolidation. So, this ensures that whichever government that has been formed over the next term, okay, they also have adequate financial capacity to run the government. That is not, they are not left without any money. Okay. So, this kind of measures need to be taken to ensure that next generation physical rules should be applied on that. Okay. So, in this session, we have discussed about what are the disadvantages of the budget and moreover, we have uh, spoken about the reforms in the budget. Okay. This is an important line that has been given in the main syllabus itself. So, try to note down the entire gist of this area and you can write it very well. Okay. So, thank you so much for listening. Let us catch up in the next session.